On this episode of China Uncensored, just when you thought it couldn't get any more complicated than a territorial dispute between China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and the Philippines, well, Indonesia had to show up. Like a seventh wheel. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your maritime mariner, Chris Chappell. The South China Sea is becoming a powder keg, and who is to blame? It is exactly one country, and let me not avoid mentioning the name. That is, the Philippines. Uh, well, I don't think that's really... We are on high alert for Japan's moves in the South China Sea. Okay, no, it's not Japan this time either. I suggest to the media that in your reports, you not selectively pump up or ignore things. Okay, fine. Everyone's stirring up trouble in the South China Sea. In fact, there really is only one country not stirring up trouble, Indonesia. And lastly, I reiterate that Indonesia is not a claimant state in the South China Sea issue. Finally, a country actually not involved in the South China Sea dispute. It's almost too good to be true. On March 19th, the Chinese fishing boat was attacked by an Indonesian armed boat. Oh, it was too good to be true. You see, on Saturday, Indonesian authorities attacked a Chinese fishing vessel in traditional Chinese fishing grounds. Of course, by attack, the Chinese foreign ministry means Indonesia fired warning shots into the air while approaching the Chinese vessel that was fishing there illegally. And by traditional Chinese fishing grounds, they mean Indonesia's exclusive economic zone, located within 200 miles around the Natuna Islands. Don't worry, I didn't know what the Natuna Islands were either. Apparently, they're here, outside the giant area of the South China Sea, covered by China's ridiculously large, I mean, historically accurate, nine-dash line. But a small part of the 200-mile exclusive economic zone around the Natuna Islands does overlap with the nine-dash line. Fortunately, Saturday's incident is nothing like what happened back in 2013, when Indonesian authorities caught another Chinese fishing vessel. That time, a Chinese patrol ship came armed with mounted machine guns and demanded they release the boat and crew. This time, the Chinese Coast Guard was much better behaved. They merely followed Indonesian authorities through their economic zone into Indonesian territorial waters, then began literally ramming the Chinese fishing boat until they released it. The eight-person Chinese crew is still in Indonesian custody, but China has called for their release. Now, Indonesia has typically stayed out of South China Sea territorial disputes, partly because Indonesia's waters are so far away from China, it's kind of ridiculous. But now, that might have changed. With the events that unfolded yesterday, we feel that we were interrupted and sabotaged in our efforts and our years of work to promote peace in the South China Sea. Wait a minute, Indonesia. Your efforts to promote peace? Didn't you know that China is the one doing all the peace promotion? And we don't hope to see any more close-up military reconnaissance or the dispatch of missile destroyers or strategic bombers to the South China Sea. This is something we have a responsibility for under our non-militarization commitment. See? Non-militarization commitment. Except last month when this was reported. The Chinese military has deployed an advanced surface-to-air missile system on one of its contested islands in the South China Sea. Or shortly after that. China deploys warplanes to disputed South China Sea islands. But compared to previous times Indonesia has dealt with illegal Chinese fishing vessels, their response this time has been much stronger. Indonesia will summon China's ambassador over an incident involving a Chinese fishing vessel in the Natuna Sea. Summoning the ambassador? That's a pretty bold move for a country that relies on China as its largest trading partner. But here's the thing. China doesn't even dispute Indonesia's territorial claims. The sovereignty of the Natuna Islands belongs to Indonesia. China has no objections to this. Yet China insists that their fishermen were still in traditional Chinese fishing grounds? I guess there's something to be said for tradition. If everyone just respects each other's traditional fishing grounds, then we should be fine. What's that, Shelley? Okay, never mind. 
But anyway, the biggest problem for China is that by alienating Indonesia, they may have lost the closest thing to a neutral ally in the South China Sea disputes. Disputes that have put China at odds with pretty much everyone else. So, how do you think this incident will affect Indonesia's involvement in the South China Sea? Leave your comments below, and remember to subscribe for more episodes of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Presidential hopeful Donald Trump has a special relationship with China. I love the Chinese people. And they love him back. Chinese leaders are acknowledging that things are getting worse. But don't worry, they have a plan.